Make Me a Fan Podcast. 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 Welcome back again, my fellow fans, to the Make Me a Fan Podcast. I'm joined again with my good, dear, close, cute little brother, TJ. How's it going? <laughs> you like that little intro? Yeah. I did that good. on the fly. That was a good little change of pace. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So today's fan requested episode is a bit near and dear to me because it involves a truck driver. And, you know, I'm I'm not your typical truck driver. If you look at me, people say I'm, I look more like a guy that just hangs out by a college as opposed to driving a semi. Yeah, you, you don't, you're not like... 250 300 pounds with like a big yeah. beard down to your belly yeah my belly doesn't cover my dick <laughs> yeah. so well yeah i'm a local delivery semi driver i don't do the long haul you know over the road semi driver but i can't help but walk past a sleeper semi without wondering if there is a poor girl chained up inside there or if the driver is like a psycho killer <laughs> yeah i've always thought about that too you know just wonder walk by and you're like what is he doing in there right now? Yeah. The truck's on and you know he's back there probably jerking off to some weird <laughs> porn or, you know, maybe there is a chick chained up back there. A couple lot lizards back there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So our topic today is the happy face killer. His name is Keith Hunter Jesperson. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this uh, is a pretty graphic story. If you couldn't tell by the, my last couple serial killer episodes. But looking back at his early history, he was born on April 6, 1955 to Les and Gladys Jesperson in Chilliwack, yeah. British Columbia. Chilliwack. Yeah, Canada. We're in Canada with all these freaks. We got that <laughs> cult leader and we got the happy face killer. I don't know. I'd have to look and see what our next few killers are, if they're Canadian or not. But yeah, the fucking Canadians. They're not as nice as everyone thinks. Yeah. Let's look at hockey. Yeah. So anyway, he was the middle child with uh, two brothers and two sisters. Uh, his father, Les, was an abusive, domineering alcoholic and seemed to kind of run in the family because Keith would claim that his paternal grandfather was also violent. When he was young, Jesperson was given uh, less attention than his siblings and treated differently by the rest of his family. After moving to uh, Sela, Washington, Jesperson had trouble fitting in and making friends because he was fucking huge. And his brothers, as brothers do, didn't really help him out. They gave him the nickname Igor or Ig. Nice. Yeah. And apparently that name stuck around through his school years. And because of this, he was a shy child, content to play by himself much of the time. He would often get into trouble for behaving badly sometimes violently, and would be severely punished by his father. This includes beatings, sometimes with a belt in front of others, and in one case, he received an electric shock from his father. Dang. Yep, so uh, we check our first checkbox. At, <laughs> at young as five years old, he would capture and torture animals. Uh, he would enjoy watching animals kill each other as well as the feeling he got from taking their lives. This continued as he got older. He would capture birds and stray cats and dogs around the trailer park where he lived with his family, severely beating the animals and then strangling them to death, something he claims his father was actually proud of him for. But in the years following, his thoughts would grow darker, and he'd fantasize about what it would be like to kill an actual human. So there's, you know, a couple check marks that we got. We got the, you know... Hurting, mutilating animals, yep. living in a trailer park, <laughs> abusive father. Yeah, I, I bet you he wet the bed. So yeah, that's most likely a big one. So, yeah, he was giant. Yep, odd, shy, quiet. Yep. Didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Yep. So at ten years old, he was friends. Oh, well, apparently he did have a friend. Oh, uh, he, he had one. Yeah, Martin. Martin. Yeah, and like boys that age, they'd often get into trouble together. Jesperson claimed he was punished many times for things that Martin did and blamed on Jesperson. This led Jesperson to attack Martin, violently beating him until his father had to pull him away. He later claimed his intention was to kill the boy. 
Approximately a year later, Jesperson was swimming in a lake when another boy held him underwater until he blacked out. I don't know how strong this other kid was to right? hold a fucking... An Igor under the water? Yeah, a giant. Although maybe it was a gentle giant. Yeah, and, don't touch me. Or it took him by surprise, and maybe, you know, the kid was, like, on a raft or something. And, That's true. Uh, but sometime later at a public pool, Jesperson got his revenge and attempted to drown the boy by holding his head underwater until a lifeguard had to pull him off. Dang. So, moving forward to 1973... He graduated from high school, but did not attend college because his father did not believe he could do it. So his brothers picked on him. His father beat him and didn't think that he was good enough to go to college. Sounds like a good life. Yeah. Good upbringing. Very good. Uh, He didn't have much luck with girls in high school, having never even attended a school dance or his prom, which, honestly, I went to one dance my entire four years of high school. I never went to my prom or homecoming. Uh I went to... The Halloween dance, my freshman year, it was like the first dance of the season. Yeah. Mom dropped me off. I sat by myself wearing a mask for like an hour. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe no one knows it's me because I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. So I took the mask off, sat there for another hour, and then called mom and she picked me back up. <laughs> Dang, that sucks. Yeah, that was the only dance I ever went to. Dang. And I've never killed anyone. Yeah? Well. That you, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's all right. The Illuminati's got my back. Yep. So uh, he did enter into a relationship, though, after high school. In 1975, when he was 20 years old, he married Rose Huck, and they had three kids together, two daughters and a boy. Jesperson worked as a truck driver to support his family. Say what you want about truck drivers, they do make good money. We do make good money. And you don't need much of an education, obviously. You don't need college to become a truck driver. So several years later... Uh, she began to suspect him of having an affair when strange women would start calling their house, claiming to be his girlfriend. Dang. Yep. Why would you give your number out? Man? I don't know, man. They didn't have cell phones back then. I mean, this was the mid seventies. Oh. So, oh yeah, well, yeah, and that was back when phone books were around. So it was probably just look up his name and yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, they didn't even have like beepers back then. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. Tension in the marriage increased, and after 14 years, while he was on the road, she packed up uh, her and her children's belongings and drove 200 miles away to live with her parents in Spokane, Washington. Uh, they would end up divorcing in 1990. Hmm. Yeah. So now he's 35 years old, got three kids, truck driver. He's divorced. He also stands at six foot seven and a half inches. And weighed approximately 240 pounds. Wow, that's actually not very heavy for a guy that tall. Like, well, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a big dude. Don't get me wrong, but I, I mean, I was thinking like 300. Wow. Yeah, he's probably like like a basketball player, yeah. like long and lean. Yeah. Wow. And if you look at the pictures that we posted for the interview, yeah, he's he's like fucking Lurch from <laughs> Adam's family. Uh, he began working towards the goal of being a Royal Canadian Mounted Policeman. But an injury suffered while training prevented that. Imagine how his life might have turned out if he became a cop instead of a truck driver. Yeah. We, we can talk about that after we hear about his crimes. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, he relocated to Cheney, Washington, and got back into truck driving. He soon realized that this job afforded him the opportunity to, to kill without being a suspect because uh, he's always traveling. Yeah. Yeah, his first known victim was Tanya Bennett. Um, and this was in Portland, Oregon on January 23rd, 1990, he met her at a bar and invited her back to the house he was renting. Uh, you know, can you guess why he brought her back? He just wanted to talk and, and, (laughs) and drink a bottle of champagne. Yeah. He was hoping to make sexy time. (laughs) Oh, sexy time. Yeah. But you know, she turned him down. And as you do when you're turned down in a fit of <laughs> blind rage, he beat her to death. Oh, yeah. That's that's the <laughs> first thing I'd think of. Right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, he established an alibi by going back out for some drinks, making sure to engage in conversations with people. You know, so, yeah, I saw him last night at the bar. He was here all night, you know, talking to us. And, yeah. and then he went back and retrieved her body and belongings and disposed of them. And the next day he's back on the road. And the body was found a few days later, but there were no suspects and no leads. 
Moving forward to August 30th, 1992, the currently unidentified body of a woman that he raped and strangled was found near Blythe, California. He says that her name was Claudia, and he claims that she was a prostitute who entered his truck at a truck stop while he was sleeping. And I oh, guess so it was self defense, ex- right? Exactly. You know, if if I'm taking my lunch at Quick Trip and a lot lizard tries getting <laughs> in my truck, I'm <laughs> kicking her in right? both of her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his fourth victim was another prostitute named Lori Ann Pentland in Salem, Oregon. Her body was found in November of that year. Uh, according to Jesperson, she attempted to double charge him for the sex act, and you know. Just like you do in Grand Theft Auto, he <laughs> strangled her and kept the money. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was more than six months before his neck victim was found in June of 1993. Another unidentified woman in Santa Nila, California, who he claimed was either named Carla or Cindy. Yeah, they're uh, basically yeah, identical. Wh- whatever. I don't remember her name. It was either Bob or Tom. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's. <laughs> Uh, Police originally considered her death a drug overdose. More than a year later, in September 1994, another Jane Doe was found in Crestview, Florida. Jesperson claims that her name was Susan. In January of 1995, Jesperson agreed to give a young woman named Angela Subrise a lift from Spokane, Washington, to Indiana. She was uh, apparently heading there to see her boyfriend and... uh, about a week into the trip, she started becoming impatient and really starting to nag him. Like women do. <laughs> he says he went to take a nap, and within 10 minutes, she woke him up and started bothering him about getting back on the road, which I don't know how the laws were back then, but legally now you can't drive for more than 11 hours straight yeah. or total in a day, and you have to have 10 hours off. Yeah. So, I mean, just let the fucking dude sleep. And it seems like every time he goes to bed, these lot lizards are trying to, like, wake him up. Well, this wasn't a lot lizard. This was just some chick. She was trying to go see her boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she really needed to get there fast. You know. He seems kind of cranky when he doesn't get his sleep, I guess. (laughs) Well, I I think we can all relate to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, but his response, though, was to rape and strangle her. The next part is straight out of a horror movie. He then strapped her to the undercarriage of his truck and dragged her face down to, quote, grind off her face and prints. Holy crap. Yeah, that, like, I've seen a lot of fucked up shit with semis in horror movies, but I've never seen a woman dragged upside down, strapped to the bottom of a semi to grind her face and shit off. Did they even have, like, the technology back then to do, like, the stuff he was trying to get rid of? Like, was forensic technology... No, I don't think they had DNA back in the yeah, 70s. That's wow. But they, he wanted to get rid of her face and her fingerprints. fingerprints. Oh, yeah, they had fingerprints, definitely. Yeah, Yeah, and I guess dental records, too, probably, oh, yeah. to grind her teeth right out. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, her body was not found for several months, and then it was only after Jesperson gave the details to police. Ah. Yeah, two months um, later, on March 10th, 1995, he decided that his longtime girlfriend, Julie Ann Winningham, was only interested in him for his money. So, what do you do? You strangle her. Yep. <laughs> and she, she was the only victim that he actually had a link to, which ultimately set police on his trail. Ugh. But this is where the story gets really interesting. This is how I first heard about this guy. Uh, after the body of his first victim, Tanya Bennett, was found... Media attention surrounding Laverne Pavlinek, a woman who falsely confessed to having killed Bennett with the help of her abusive boyfriend, John Sovinovsky. Yeah, like she wanted to get her piece of shit abusive boyfriend arrested. So she went to the cops and said, yeah, me and him did this. He made me kill this woman to try to get him arrested. Fucking wow. That's that's pretty intense. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, this guy's grinding women's faces off with a semi. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this woman's trying to get her boyfriend locked up. Come All on, right. man. So, yeah, Jesperson, of course, he was pissed that he wasn't getting the proper media attention. You know, a lot of serial killers are narcissists like, you know, BTK or the Zodiac. 
So to get attention, he first drew a smiley face on a bathroom wall and wrote a letter with proof of his first killing. When that didn't get a response, he began writing letters to the media and prosecutors, starting with a six-page letter to a newspaper in which he revealed the details of his killings. He signed each letter with a smiley face. This led journalist Phil Stanford to dub him the smiley face or the happy face killer. Smiley face killer we already did, and he's never been caught. So, you know, this is this is the happy face yeah. killer. Uh, on March 30th, 1995, Jesperson was arrested for the murder of Winningham, his girlfriend. Jesperson was questioned by police, but they had no grounds to arrest him after he refused to talk. In the days following, uh, he decided that he was, you know, definitely going to get arrested. So he tried to kill himself twice. Both attempts failed, obviously. You know, as good as he was at killing women, he couldn't even fucking kill himself. All right. Two times. Jeez. Fucking pathetic. So finally, on March 30th in 1995, he turned himself in, hoping it would result in leniency during his sentencing. Uh, while in custody, Jesperson began revealing details of his killings and making claims of many others, most of which he later recanted. Also, a few days before his arrest, he wrote a letter to his brother. In it, he confessed to having killed eight people over the course of five years. This led police agencies in several states across the country to reopen old cases, many of which were found to be possible victims of Jesperson. Although Jesperson at one point claimed to have as many as 160 victims, only eight women killed in California, Florida, Nebraska, Oregon, Washington, and Wyoming have ever been confirmed. He is serving three consecutive life sentences at the Oregon State Penitentiary in Salem. In September of 2009, he was indicted for murder in Riverside County, California, and was extradited to California to face the charges in December of 2009. And I couldn't find any outcome. So as far as I know, he's still alive and chilling in prison. Maybe we should go interview him. I don't know if... We don't really have the funds to drive out there. <laughs> It'd be like a vacation. Maybe maybe you can write him a letter. Become yeah, a pen be pal pen with them. <laughs> and then, you know, we we'll have him call us. We can get one of those Google numbers. That'd be sweet if we could have him like interview him during a podcast or something. Yeah. I don't know. What what, what would you ask him? I have no idea. <laughs> be like like how did you chain that chick up under the yeah. semi like like and and how did you come up with that idea? Like, wh- and why didn't you do that with anybody else? And why didn't yeah? Why did you like put her in the undercarriage of the semi? Why didn't, wouldn't you just drag her behind the trailer yeah. or something? Like the amount of well, but but then maybe well, but either way, body, then you could body parts would have fell off. You would have thought, and you have like the red blood streak <laughs> dragging behind your semi. Yeah, like you're leaking red oil. And, and I wonder if he did that like on a like a uh, dirt gravel road like in the country, or if he just did it like on. That's what like, I. Like that's a, what I picture. An actual, like asphalt road somewhere. <laughs> I mean, either way. And like, how do you like? Let's say the the girl was skinny and she was like 115 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine lifting a limp 115 pound girl <laughs> up to chain her? Yeah, I assume he chained her. her there. Yeah, yeah. While he's chaining. I mean, maybe he used like the the cargo straps where you can like ratchet them. Uh, yeah, that could be. Yeah, I don't know. I I'd, I'd ask him how the fuck he did that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was a big dude. He, you know, he was six seven. So, I mean, I guess he was pretty strong. But yeah, I, I'd probably also ask him why he wrote a letter to his brother if his brother always picked on him. Yeah. And why he never tried to get any revenge on his his siblings or his dad. Yeah. Like he just, you know, focused all his hate on these these women. Although some of them, you know, according to him, he could just be making excuses like the. A hooker that tried fucking ripping him off or yeah. the naggy bitch that wouldn't shut up and let him sleep. Well, it all sounds like this coincides with his, his wife leaving him and his divorce because the killings didn't happen until 1990. And wasn't it 1990 when his wife left? I think so. they got divorced in 1990. So so yeah, the, so if you watch Criminal Minds, that was his like life stressor that caused him to kill. That could be. I mean, they don't say... I didn't find anything about his children if he still had like a rapport with them if you know they went to visit him or if he just basically his wife took him and his kids and dipped and he just went and lived on the road yeah but yeah imagine if you would have become a cop 
instead of a truck driver. So I, I yeah, I wonder if he would have abused his powers as a law enforcement officer and still like killed women. And- that was my first thought because I I've seen a lot of documentaries about you know cops that are serial killers. Yeah. And, um, that was my first thought, but my second thought is if he became a cop, maybe you know he wouldn't have killed anyone. Maybe yeah. it would have kept him, you know, on the straight and narrow, and he would have got married again, and you know, he would have got past that stressor. Yeah, I well, I wonder too, like it, like because they said that the truck driving him, um, truck driving allowed him time to do like all these killings and whatever, and also was and not be at, a suspect yeah. because you know he's never in the same place. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if he wouldn't have had that job, then would he have never killed? Yeah, I mean that's that's crazy. Good job, Mounties. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah. Damn you Canada! Keep your, keep your fucking serial killers up in Canada. <laughs> we're we're America. We're we're nice. We don't hurt anyone down here. Yeah, you know we just we like our McDonald's and our apple pies. You can keep your your maple leaves and serial killers. Canadian bacon, like what the hell is that? <laughs> it's fucking know. ham. Yeah, it's that's all ham. it is. Ham. It's, ham. it's not bacon. It's ham. It doesn't belong on pizza. Yeah, it's like tomatoes. Just, exactly. Tomatoes does not belong on pizza yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, there's enough tomatoes in the sauce. Yeah, that's what it is. It's tomato sauce. Yeah. You don't need tomatoes on your tomato sauce. And for the record, you can never have too much cheese on pizza. Or cheese in general. Or cheese in the crust. Yeah, cheese in the crust is amazing. And then you dip the cheese stuffed crust <laughs> in more cheese, in jalapeno and who, cheese. And who cares if it's soggy? It's got cheese in it. Yeah, it's it. good. <laughs> yeah, take that, Adam. It's a fact now. He's not an American guy, so don't worry. Yeah. And everyone knows that Adam's probably a serial killer anyway, <laughs> according to Joe. All right. So I guess it's sponsor time, unless you got anything else to add about this, uh, this crazy truck driving son of a bitch. Um, hmm. Well, I don't know. I kind of like, the, I, I always find it weird on these serial killers. Like, so the greater majority of them could have probably killed and gotten away with it and, and never got caught. But then they wanted the attention and they craved it so mm-hmm. much that, oh, he started writing letters to reporters, like a six page letter to a reporter. Like, come on, dude. And then I don't know. I mean, I guess that goes with kind of like anything. You start getting bored with things. So then, you are, you know, like like when you're a kid and you do stupid stuff, you know, ding dong ditch or whatever, then that'll lead to, oh, this is boring now. So let's start throwing stones through people's windows or. Wow. That was a pretty big jump. Yeah. I, know. I thought they were going to go to like toilet paper and, oh, and then go eggs. to eggs. Yeah. And then Man. stones. Yeah. Jesus well, Christ. let's just go straight to it. You know, I don't know. But yeah. So I guess it's all about the thrill. And if you're not getting anything out of it no more, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess. But it's also kind of ironic that. They're not getting this attention for killing, so they get themselves caught, which prevents them from ever getting to kill again. Exactly. But yeah. I, I do agree that you know they, they start to fuck up because they get too used to it. They're mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I've killed eight people now. I'm still not caught. Like I'm invincible. Yeah. Like like Dennis Rader, the BTK killer. Yeah. How long did he go without killing someone? Twenty. Oh, why well, he? I think he went three or six years. Was it? I don't remember. Uh, we'll we'll have to do him on an episode because he's a fucking the luckiest dumbest serial killer yeah, exactly. ever. Exactly, luckiest dumbest. Exactly. Yeah, he got himself caught. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we'll have to. Uh, I'll try to find out what penitentiary this guy's uh, locked up in. Yeah, I'll send him a. They got email in prison. You think? Um. Well, actually, is it happyface at gmail dot com? Some some of them do. Oh but, really? Yeah, but the prisons. Well, at least here. Locally, I just found out that some of the inmates do, and they have time when they can go on the the computers. But the prison won't give you out that information. You have to ask the the inmate that. So we would have to like write a letter first, establish contact. We got to get a PO box if we're writing letters to fucking serial killers. I don't (laughs) want them to know where I live. Exactly. (laughs) All right. So sponsor time. Then our first sponsor is our main sponsor, Deerwood Photography, the best photographer in the whole state of Wisconsin and probably Canada. Uh, the webpage is still under construction, but you can see tons of awesome photos on Facebook to search for Deerwood Photography, or you can find links at our website, Make Me a Fan Podcast. We'd also like to thank the Balance Yoga and Wellness Center in Franklin, Wisconsin. If you live in southeastern Wisconsin and you need to do some yoga, 
either for exercise or for a clear state of mind. Check them out. You can visit them online at getbalancedyoga.com. Uh, if you use the promo code Make Me a Fan for Deerwood Photography, you can get a free print. And if you use the promo code MMAF for uh, Balanced Yoga and Wellness, you get 1% off anything. And tell them that they should put a candy bar vending machine in their front lobby. Yeah, you got to you know stay hydrated and have energy. Yeah, and they need a sauna and a hot tub. Yeah, that would be nice. I was really disappointed there was no shower there. Yeah, I, wor- I worked up a sweat when I went. Oh, me too. Me and TJ were dying. Yeah. Most of you have laughter because we suck at doing <laughs> yoga. Yeah. <laughs> we are. I was like, I'm in good shape. You know, I do a lot of physical shit. And then I'm like, oh my God, why are we only fucking balancing on one side? Can I use the other side too? Yeah. And then like five minutes into it, we were like, it's been an hour, right? Are we done now? Yeah. I'm like, nope. We still got 50 minutes to go. And then and the fucking instructor's like, oh. You know, we started a little late, so we're, we'll go a little later. I'm yeah. like, no. If you guys want to go, you can go, but I'm we're like, going to yeah. go for another 10 minutes. Like, And naturally, me and TJ are in the back of the class, so no one can see <laughs> how fucking pathetic we are. Yep. But of course, everyone keeps turning around and looking at us because we're giggling like little schoolgirls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, yeah, check out Deerwood Photography and uh, Balance Yoga. They're both on Facebook and the internet. And uh, we are on Facebook and Instagram at Make Me a Fan Podcast. And on Twitter, we are Make Me a Fan. So thank you, everyone. And we will talk to you in a few days with a brand new conspiracy. Say bye, Teach. Bye bye. Thank you for listening. You Make Me a Fan Podcast. 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 Make Me a Fan Podcast.